Welcome to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. Prepare your heart for laughter and tears as we share the unpolished stories of the homeless and hurting, hope and transformation. Here is your host, Director of the Union Gospel Mission, Pastor Tim Lane. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I have a special guest with me today. His name is Bob LaRocco. And you know what? Every show I I try to bring us something that is going to give us hope in a in a world that really seems like it's spinning out of control. The great news is if you're in Christ Jesus, the world is not spinning out of control and God has never been out of the control of this world. Although right now it's not the world we grew up in, it's it's changed, it's morphed and many of us especially as you reach your 50s, 60s, 70s, you just feel somewhat out of place. Well, there is good news always, and the good news is Jesus Christ is still a Savior. Jesus Christ is still seeking to save those who will believe. And so I have with me today Bob LaRocco. He has uh, gone through our program. He's the first member of what we are calling Redemption House, which is a house that we bought in downtown Sacramento to take men from the program who have really, who are really, really trying to bring their lives back into focus. And so he's graduated the program. He's in a healthy, well-balanced church. Uh, at least he's visiting some of the ones that he still wants to go to. And so, you know, that's all part of it. When I left the church uh, a few months ago, that I had pastored, I'm in that same boat that I need to find a healthy, well-balanced, Bible-believing church. And it's like a marriage. If you truly believe in membership in a church and you truly believe that being part of the the church of, of the living God means that it is like a family, then you don't just go out and pick a church and in a week decide you're going to join it. So it takes a while to really know where God is leading you. So Bob LaRocco, uh, I'd like to introduce him to you, and I would like uh, like you to listen to him because I think his story is it's a fascinating one. So, Bob, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. So how long ago did you graduate? Uh, I graduated, what, uh, the 20th, 21st of this month? Yeah, so. so, Bob, uh, tell me something a little bit about your background. What what brought you to the mission? Uh, How did you even hear about the mission? I heard about the mission through the woman that I was living with, uh, renting a room from. Um, she's a Christian woman, and she listened to the station. And I was, um, she knew I was, falling away from God. Um, and one day she said to me, because she knows I, I was having a hard time. I was starting to do all kinds of bad things, drinking, so what, you know, just just, just living my life. Not a court, not how God would want me to live. And I knew that, and I was going down a hole. Um, but she introduced me to the gospel mission. She said, well, maybe you should get, she said, maybe you need to get God back in your life. Because I was a, a raised Catholic for my childhood. For How did she years. know about the mission? She found out through her church, which is uh, in Citrus Heights. Mm. Um, it's uh, Fair Oaks Church. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's what it's called, too. It's off uh, right in Fair Oaks there. Uh, I think it's off of Madison. I'm not positive, though. Well, but. there's a couple of bigger churches out there. There's Fair Oaks Presbyterian. There's Fair Oaks Baptist Church. But at any rate, it's a church that she'd been faithfully going to, I assume. Yeah, and she heard about it through one of her, her friends that go there, and she told me about it. So I looked you guys up online, and I looked you guys up, and I uh, what grabbed my attention was uh, Rudolph Willis. Uh, testimony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And his wasn't a lot like mine, but I really, um, I could, I really understood. I it really hit home with me. He was, his life was spiraling out of control too. And that's where my, my life was spiraling out of control also. 
So that's that's how, that's how I heard about you guys. I looked you up and read his testimony, and then I found out that you guys uh, actually helped. I wasn't really looking for somewhere to stay, per se. I was just looking for something to get back in with God. Um, well, you weren't out on the streets. You were a finished carpenter before you came to the mission, right? I mean, it, right. it is so often times people think that that if you come to uh, the Union Gospel Mission, you have to have come out of prison or you have to come off the street. And that wasn't your scenario, right? No, it was not. Um, I did lose my car because I got in a terrible car accident and I walked away from it. That was, that was a miracle mm. in itself. Um, just it was a flat-out miracle. I should have. I didn't hurt anybody. I didn't hurt my. Well, I got seven stitches in the back of my head and I walked away. Took some, and I took a capsi ride home from the uh, emergency hospital. Walked through the front door and went, huh, thanks, God. No. <laughs> yeah. I've escaped. <laughs> yeah, I like, yeah, missed that one. But um, that was a real uh, knock on the door saying, hey, man, you got to get your stuff. You got to get your stuff together. Or you're going to you're going to you're going to end up dead. I mean, that's what I was telling myself. And that's what people around me, were, especially the woman, Ka- Kathleen, there's her, is her name. I uh, lived with her for 17 years, we're in a room from her, just really, very close friends. I was a good friend with her son, uh, Tyler. Uh, he played rugby at Davis. And uh, just uh, been, I was, I was a family friend and just became part of their family. Very nice. So, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when you were being interviewed at the final interview before you graduated, I remember you said that about living with this woman and she was, and, and I was taken a little bit aback, and I and I asked, "Well, uh, Bob, could you? Uh, you said you were living with a woman." <laughs> right. he said, "Well, I was I was renting a room for her." I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> right. uh, yeah, no, you're not the first person that said that, or it's always go, "What?" <laughs> no, well, yeah. let me ask you something. Uh, <clears throat> I assume after all the years that you'd been living at her place, you've been renting a room. You're a family friend. She's a believer. And she's talking to you about Christ, and she's telling you about the Union Gospel Mission. You decided to come. Did you did you realize that you were functioning without God in your life at that juncture? At that juncture, yeah. I, I well, I realized how I realized how far away I was. I was living, you know, the way I wanted to live. I wasn't living the way God wanted me to live, and. What really hit a home is when, when I got to the mission and the people that are outside the mission. I, 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 I compared to the mission like a big lighthouse, and this lighthouse is all this wreckage around it. And, and this wreckage is trying to get – the lighthouse is bringing this wreckage in and trying to repair it. They're just people that are just lost their way. I was one – I just lost my way. But I didn't – I didn't realize how far away I was from God until I really, uh, until it dawned on me, until I, because I came up to the door and you guys offered me a bed and all this, but I wanted to get into the program. They said, well, you're going to have to wait a little while to get into the program. And I was like, oh, (laughs) man. (laughs) So um, I wanted to get back in. I wanted to be a part of God's life. I wanted God back in my life. So I waited it out. And, um, like I say, I talked to Rudolph, and Rudy got in. And he Rudolph realized how serious I was about it because I was there every day bugging him. Going, yeah, hey, Rudolph man. did the same thing. I was going, hey, man, get me in, get me in. Hey, is there a bed open yet? Get me in, get me in. I think he's just getting real sick of me. <laughs> he wasn't getting sick of me, but he understood, and he got me in. No, that wouldn't have made Rudolph sick. That no. would have been an encouragement to him no. that you were serious about getting in. Yeah, he knew I was. <laughs> he knew I was. You know, we have this euphemistic saying that some guys are three hots in a cot, meaning that they're just looking to get out of the winter rain or whatever the case is. And they're just looking for three meals and a place to sleep. And Mm -hmm. obviously he knew from what you had said that that wasn't your case. You were truly seeking what you did not have. Yeah. And I could, I felt it too. And I knew God was out of my life. I felt it. I was truly alone, and you know, people say they're alone. And they're alone, but I was lonely, and I needed. I needed, and nothing else was. Uh, help, nothing was helping. Yeah, 
Nothing else was helping. The alcohol, the women, every, every, nothing was helping. Well, you can't, you can't fill a God-sized hole in your heart with things. Absolutely. And the problem with most people, all people, is that they don't even realize at any juncture that without Christ dwelling within them, without that Holy Spirit dwelling within them, they don't have the capacity to stop those bad things and to fill that hole. Absolutely. We don't like to think of it. I never thought of myself as an enemy of God, but before I came to Christ, that's exactly what I was. We have to understand that every human being who has ever walked the face of the earth has transgressed a holy God's law. And by that, we have made ourselves guilty of to death. And there's no answer to that. You can't, you can't make yourself better, right, Bob? No. I mean, how many times did you try to just live better? Oh, uh, several times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It only lasts for so long. Yeah, it does. I mean, we can take and we can straighten ourselves up. We can clean ourselves up for a little bit. Yep. But then, uh, you know, I, I hate to say this, but the Bible says as a dog returns to its vomit, that's how we are when we are trying to fight it just on our own strength. And we're never going to be able to do it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that when you come to Christ, everything's going to be easy. I'm sure that everything has not been easy as you went through this program, right? Oh no, it's a it's a it's a hard program, but it's hard in a good way. It's it's worth every. It was worth. It was worth the time. I'm so glad that I pushed and stuck with it. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad that you stuck with it too, and uh, I assume that. Uh, that your friend uh, Kathleen, you said? Kathleen. Kathleen yeah. Harrison. How does she feel about this transformation? She's so proud of me, and she can really see a difference. And she's, she is just so proud of me, and she's just so happy. And she goes, she's back in church with a vengeance. She, has, she, was, she was slacking off a little bit herself, going, not going to church, skipping Sundays. You know how we do. And I do know how we do. Get, get a little bit too comfortable. <laughs> And she saw a difference in me, and she, boy, oh, boy, man, she's back in it. She's back in the saddle. Well, so then there was a mutual thing there. Absolutely. God used her Mm -hmm. to direct you to the mission, and then your transformation helped remind her she was already a saved woman, but uh, you're starting to slack off, and there's danger there when we— when we say, you know what, I can skip this Sunday, I can do this, uh, I think I'd rather go do this, you put yourself in harm's way, right? Absolutely. Yeah, when things start going, that's, that's it, you say that, it's funny you say that, it, when things start going really well in our lives, that's mm-hmm. the time you got to stand back and go, hey, who gave me all this? Remember that. Well, you know what, that's one of the things that we... You know, the the Bible tells us that although they knew God, they did not acknowledge him or give thanks to him, right? Absolutely. And one of the things that we need to realize every day is that we can function, we cannot function outside of God's hands, outside of his plan, and find any kind of lasting or sustainable peace and joy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that when you come to Christ, all your troubles are over, right? No, it's just it's just begun. I wouldn't say with troubles, but uh, you're, you're it's a new life, and it, it it's just begun. And, and no, it's not going to be all roses, but it hasn't been for me. It's it, there's been tough times, but nothing that I can't get over with God. Nothing, nothing's impossible when you got God on your side. Absolutely nothing. Well, you know what? It's a funny thing. Uh, when I talk to people, in your case, let's say, you're a finished carpenter. It doesn't mean you're never going to hit your thumb with the hammer again. <laughs> That's right. And it's not going to be that, oh, you know what? I, you know, oh, boy, I, I hit my thumb with the hammer. I'm so good. No, you're going to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> and because nobody wants to get hit with a hammer. Just like... When people come to Jesus Christ and they think, okay, well, all my financial troubles are over, that is not it. But here's what is over. Your fear of hell and death 
vanishes. Yes. Because mm-hmm. Jesus Christ has never, never in all the history of humanity has ever broken his word. Absolutely. And so if you are in Christ Jesus, you can be assured that he is going to be with you and that you're going to make it to the finish line, right? Yes, sir. Yes. But not perfectly, right? Not perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> but but I will make it. So you have some plans. Uh, first of all, we got you. I, I mentioned the fact that we have Redemption House, which is a house that we bought thanks to all of you guys. We wanted to put the money into a house where it was centrally located to many of the churches in in our area. And so this one happens to be right down off E Street, so we're very close to several churches, including Emmanuel. I don't know which one's exactly you visited but I've, I've, I've visited emmanuel with ralph king and uh sun river and citrus heights mm-hmm. with jeremy yeah okay good so just the two so far yes sir all right so i uh i i gotta tell you just like i alluded to you know for over well over 40 years i have been the member of a church pastoring the church doing those type of things and even before that, my wife and I were members of a church, and so I had forgotten what it feels like to be a stranger. And you know what? Churches out there, I've been to several churches, and some were not very welcoming, not very warm. I was just that single man because I didn't have my wife anymore, single guy coming in, and uh I thought, well, I'm I'm certainly not going to wear a logoed shirt because I don't want them to know who I am. Mm-hmm. And I just want to see how it goes and get a feel for it. So sometimes I have to go out and say, hey, I'm Tim. Uh, what's your name? But churches, our guys, especially ones who have never been church, don't even know what the protocol is to go to a church, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you had Jeremy who took you, right? Mm-hmm. And you had Ralph who took you to Emmanuel, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How would you feel if you were just out there roaming around looking for a church? Oh, it's it's very intimidating, intimidating. Um, because yeah, you're you're the new guy, mm-hmm. and and this and the people at the church are all you're coming into their their home, their church, and they know the new guy when they see the new guy. So it's it's good to have to bring somebody with you. Um, and it's good to get in good to get into service right away with the church if, and yeah. become a member. That's what you want to do. You want to get into service. That's how you're going to start meeting people, shaking hands, helping out people. That's the best thing to do. Yeah, you know, we often refer to them as pews, and most churches have not pews anymore, but they have nice cushy seats at interlock, which even the church I was pastoring had the nice interlocking seats with the lumbar cushion. And uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate that kind of stuff, right? But the bottom line is we often say you don't want to be a bench warmer. When you get into a church, you don't want to just be a visitor for the next 10 years. What you want to do is you want to get involved in the church. You want to be of service. And it doesn't mean you have to be an elder or a pastor or a teacher, but there are numerous ways to serve. And so once you get in there to be part of it, and listen, actually becoming a member of a church, you know, I mean, when we would make somebody a member of the church, we would always ask, you know, the church, do you, do you promise to love these guys and, you know, do those things? And so the churches need to be welcoming, and you need to be, if if they're not forthright in coming, and I don't mean honest, I mean if they're not coming to you, then you need to get over that fear and start shaking people's hand and introducing yourself, right? That's right. Absolutely. And when you've done that, do you feel like they rejected you or or they were welcoming then? Oh, no. Both churches, Emmanuel and uh, Sun River, open arms. Open arms and how you doing? Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? What would you like to know about our church? Yeah. On and on and on. Yeah. Well... As you know, uh, Robert Briggs is the church of, uh, he's the pastor at Emmanuel Baptist Church, and 
I've known Robert for years, and I went there the other day, and it was truly welcoming. And, and there are other churches in our area. I have not been out to Sun River yet. I know Jeremy is going out there, but uh, I've heard they're also very welcome, welcoming. And it's it's pivotal when you get people, especially guys, like I said, that have never been churched. And so think of this. You're going to go out, and a lot of our guys, you're going to laugh if you've been in church your whole life. They don't know if they have to call, if they're supposed to make an appointment to come to church. Well, what do I do? Am I going to be welcomed in there? Do I have to sign something? And I, there might be churches like that, but I've never run into one. Most churches just want you to come, and they will. They will tell you all about themselves, right? Yes, they will, absolutely. If one church is a little standoffish, you don't be. Yep. So, you know, uh, we've got about three minutes left of the show, and then I'd like you to stay over for one more show. But I want to get into a little bit of your background because it isn't like you never made any money. <laughs> no, I made plenty of money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean— I don't know if you know about this, but Finnish carpenters, you know, they're not they're not out there making three bucks an hour. No, no, we make we make some we make some good money, especially especially custom work. And that can be an advantage, and it can be a trap. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because especially, uh, you've been single how long, Bob? Oh, it's been going on over ten years now. Okay, and yeah. and uh, so next time when we get on the show, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your background, those type of things that you've gone through, what your hopes and expectations are of the next 10 years, because you've got at least 10 years of working ahead of you, and what kind of mistakes you made before that uh, now coming to Christ, how do you see that that's going to be different this time? Mm. Because that's the key, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. If we continue to do the same thing over and over again, what does it say? Yeah. It's the definition of insanity, insanity, right? Insanity, that's right. When we expect a different outcome. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, Bob, what are you? Have you been out there already uh, looking for a position, or? Oh, uh, as far as work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm working with a, a gentleman, uh, Frank. Uh, he's an old contractor friend I used mm -hmm. to do work for. He's a, he's a Christian also. Um, he he was a friend of Kathleen's. I introduced him to Kathleen. Uh, he did some work for uh, on her house, and he just fell back into my life. He heard that I went to the mission, and his son was uh, had drug problems, and he tried to get his son into the mission. His son just didn't didn't want to do it. Uh, he wasn't ready yet. He wasn't ready yet. We just have one minute. Is there anything you'd like to tell uh, folks, and then we'll hold you over for one more show? Okay. Um, tell uh, tell everybody, you know, God is your savior, savior, and um, he's all, he's all you got. Love him. He loves you. You know what. Uh, thank you, Bob, for coming on the show. And I want you guys to remember that we're going to get into a little more detail next time. So if you guys have the opportunity to tune into the show next week, I would love you to do that. Uh, Bob is the real deal. I'm convinced in my heart that, you know, what he wants from this point on is to walk uprightly before God. So as always, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. been listening to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. If your heart's been touched and you want to know more about the work of the mission, log on to UGMSAC.com, UGMSAC.com. To donate clothing, food, time, or financial help, call 916-447-3268, 916-447-3268. Thank you so much for listening. Join us again next week at the same time for Voices from the Street.